Hey guys and girls, it's Friday the 14th of August 2020, 10.28 in the morning. And I just wanted to take you into one of our bottom fields over here and just show you how our corn is coming along. So this is the soil in our bottom field and as you can see it's incredibly sandy. You dig down a bit, I can't find any moisture, it's just sand and dust. And uh, you know, really surprising for us that all of this corn is just grown like this. I mean some of it is almost shoulder height and this is in a couple of weeks. It's incredible stuff. Um, drought resistant and look how green this is. So in order for this corn to start growing, the actual kernels or cobs, uh, we need to water it. And this year we don't have our irrigation system set up to do this. Uh, by next year we're hoping to get our irrigation system sorted so we can actually lay down some irrigation pipes and start dropping water on these fields. But for this year these plants won't actually produce corn. They're only going to get to a certain size and they don't have enough water to make corn. So the benefits of us having all of this corn in this field here are not only because it's uh, you know it looks green and looks good but it's it's to act as sheep food. So at this time of year the grass is incredibly dry and very hard to grow so the sheep don't have much food. So what we're doing here is um, we're, we're growing this corn which as you can see doesn't take much water. The sheep can come through and eat it and uh, they're going to obviously um, create manure and compost and droppings on the field which is going to be good for the field. Another thing that we could do is um, we could also irrigate some of the sections here if we wanted to and that would produce corn kernels and then those corn kernels could then go on to feed the chickens. Another really interesting thing we have going on here is some companion planting. So over here we have a little watermelon starting and as you can see this watermelon plant is growing up with the corn and uh, they're sort of living in symbiosis with each other. And as you can see, there's a lot of this watermelon growing all throughout the corn here. This is going to be excellent. You know, we haven't put down any water for any of these plants and they're all just growing amazingly next to each other and with each other. So all in all, what an amazing crop. It's covered our fields in green. It's going to provide food for sheep. Uh, the sheep are going to provide compost and manure that goes back into the soil. And potentially it could provide food for our chickens or for ourselves. And as you can see, we've got lovely green fields once again in the heat of the Portuguese summer, which is pretty extreme. It's Friday the 14th of August 2020 and it's 11.17 in the morning. And I'm just here by the front porch checking out the vines growing over. These are obviously giving us some shade and everything but they're also producing some beautiful grapes. I don't know if you can see here they're looking really good they're all, and they're also tasting amazing. So they're pretty much ripe now or at least they taste ripe to me. I haven't used the refractometer or whatever it's called to test sugar levels or anything like that. The grapes all over our terrace area are doing incredibly well as, as you can see and then we also have grapes on our water tank over here which are also doing exceptionally well. So you can see these ones are also looking really uh, really nice and plump and juicy and there's just a whole multitude of them just hanging all over the place here. Now our vineyard on the other hand isn't doing so well. Let's just go over here and just see what's happening with the grapes. So these ones are looking a little bit henpecked quite literally. The chickens and stuff are going through here eating them. These ones are looking a bit dried up and shriveled. Um, and it's not looking that much better as you work your way down through the vineyard. So at first you're probably wondering if I've done something wrong or what the story is. But after speaking to all of the farmers in the area, everyone seems to be suffering with the same problem with their grapes this year. We had a, a, very, a very harsh winter, lots of storms and everything like that. And uh, I'm not sure if that's played a part of it. But also I've been told that 
leap years are really bad for harvests and that people weren't expecting to get a good one this year. So I'm not sure how much wine you can make out of these because uh, they look very small and quite shriveled. But let's give one of them a taste and see. So you can see it's a little, little grape. Oh, that's actually surprisingly pleasant. Wow, okay. So maybe, so maybe if these aren't table grapes, you know, they're not supposed to be attractive, but they're actually quite, uh, quite good for wine still. I'm really not sure. I'm not a, a wine producer yet, so I'm really not sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, these don't look like the kind of grapes that you get in the shop. They look all very uneven and stuff like that. But they're not looking too bad. I mean, I was expecting them to be a lot fuller. But uh, yeah, so we do actually have some grapes. I was going to start this video by walking you through the vineyard here and showing you how dismal the grapes were, but we do seem to have a bit of a grape harvest going on here. It's definitely going to be a lot of grape juice coming out of here. Um, so yeah, look at that. Okay, that's not too bad. So the bottom field's in that direction, and the road that separates the bottom field from this area is basically a vineyard that runs right across, and that's covered in vines. And then we work our way across, obviously, to the middle section. That's got vines running along here. There's some vines on the dam, some vines across here. Uh, obviously, we have the vines on the terrace, and uh, sorry, on the water tank and on the terrace. And uh, then there's a, a, a row of vines going horizontally like this separating this vineyard from the first field. So we do have quite a few vines, um, which should translate into quite a lot of grapes. So that's pretty good. Hey guys and girls, it's uh, Saturday the 8th of, uh, where are we? 8th of August, yeah, Saturday the 8th of August 2020 and um, it's like 11.14 and it's already about 30 degrees uh, and I'm going to try and see if I can uh, go for a run really. So I've been pretty bad at, uh, at doing my running. <laughs> Before I left for Portugal, I used to run every single day and uh, cycle almost every single day. And uh, so yeah, since moving to Portugal, it's been all beers and steaks and uh, and relaxing, really. So yeah, that's just not good enough, you know. Got to get back on it. What a beautiful place to do it, though. Perfect. Go for a little dip and get rid of some of this heat and sweat. Oh wow, it's a nice big black bass just down there. I don't know if you can see on the camera, he's swimming off. Wow. Amazing. Oh yeah. Just the perfect way of cooling off after a run. Oh, 
I didn't even go that far, truth be told. But uh, I've, I'm so out of practice and it's so hot um, that I'm just going to take it easy and uh, make it enjoyable for myself instead of a big arduous challenge. When we first moved to uh, this area, it was winter time and I can remember coming to this dam and picturing what it was going to be like to swim in it um, during the summertime. Oh, there's some people down there. Didn't expect that. There's a car parked just down there. Uh, but yeah, I was looking at this dam and thinking, wow, in the summer it's going to be amazing. But I expected it to be really cold. You know, uh, in South Africa, when you swim in these large lakes and dams and things, it's pretty freezing, you know. Even though um, the outdoor temperature is like, you know, really high, the dams and the rivers will be really cold. But it's not the case here. This water is really warm. It's, um, it's kind of like when you go swimming in Thailand or something, that sort of, that temperature, somewhere between like 24 and 28. Uh, I mean, maybe in the really deep sections it's going to be a lot cooler than that, but it's really pleasant. I mean, you could just stay in this water all day long, you know? Amazing. That was pretty amazing and now it's time to run my ass back home. Oh, just having to take a rest underneath this lovely cork oak here because it's absolutely sweltering already. Whew. Right, it's hit the road. Wow, that was uh, a lot harder than I was expecting, to be honest. It's been almost a year since I ran properly. For me, running is a, a mental game. Obviously there's a physical element to it, but uh, for me the important thing is forcing yourself into an uncomfortable position and making yourself stay there. Mind over matter. Uh, you know, we, all, we always have these sort of excuses inside that stop us from doing things. And uh, you know, it makes us weak. Uh, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, you need to be strong and tough and everything, but, you know, especially, you know, in this world, you never really know what's going to happen next. And, uh, you know, to have a, a strong mind is very important. You know, you can, you can have a strong mind and a weak body. Um, you know, I think that's probably better than a, a weak mind and a strong body, you know. Um, but obviously, if you can get a strong body and a strong mind, and uh, you can obviously be sort of spiritually or emotionally uh, balanced as well, then that's probably the perfect thing that we should all be aiming for. And we're back on the farm. And uh, yeah, very, very hot. I wonder where the fishies are today. 